G'day guys, in this episode I take a question around how much do I value for early stage entrepreneurs traditional business education. I give my views around how it's not just a nil ball game, but if applied in an incorrect manner, it could ultimately kill your business. I ride the wave swiftly, I fear no man, check my titles mate quickly. Came from the sky with the light of day in me, you grew my own wings so the pilot came G'day guys, look at episode 209 of Ask Jack D. Today Rosie tells me we have a very interesting question. I'm intrigued to hear what it is, Rosie. I think you're going to like it. So this question comes from Alan Doy, he's actually a member. He asks, Hey Jack, hope you're well. What value do you place on traditional business education such as degrees and MBAs, etc.? Being an entrepreneur, do these skills apply to us or should we be leveraged? Keep going. Talk Sorry, on. my mic dropped, everyone. Mic dropped. <laughs> you're not supposed to go to the end I of hope the that rant. It's working. <laughs> not mid rant. Okay. Um, being an entrepreneur, do these skills apply to us or should we be leveraging the basics and eventually employ others with these talents? The old premature mic drop. That's not good <laughs> Has it for thrown business. you off? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I got it. Uh, yeah, cool. So, Alan, thank you. Thank, is it Al, Alan or Elaine? It's Elaine. Yeah, it's Elaine. Elaine yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I recognise the name. He's a member of us. Uh, okay, so, Elaine, um, I don't place a huge importance on traditional business education. And it's hard to speak universally. I'm sure some do it better than others. But I've researched world's best practice when it comes to um entrepreneurial education. So it's important to distinguish, you've got business education, which is MBAs, right? Which is uh, probably, and, it, and that's, that's a strong probably, useful for those who want to go and work within a corporate and become a senior manager in the corporate. It's probably quite useful for that path. Uh, is it useful to become an entrepreneur? No. Is it a nil ball game? If you go and do that education, is it a nil ball game to become an entrepreneur? No. Is it detrimental to do that if you want to become an entrepreneur? In my view, yes. And I'll explain what I mean by that. I spent a week over in um, the States last year and we, we went over and, 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 and went to a whole, whole bunch of universities that are held up as the best in the world when it comes to entrepreneurial education. So you've got business education, you've got entrepreneurial education. The two are different, right? How BP or Yahoo or uh, Westpac whoever, businesses of those sides run their business relative to an early stage, high growth business, let's say sub $100 million. And so from zero or minus 100 grand up to $100 million. The, the games are so substantially different. Like they're not even in the same ballpark. Small businesses are not smaller versions of big businesses, right? The principles that you apply in corporate business to grow and protect the organisation are often the complete opposite to what you would do to start and build a successful early stage, growth stage, becoming mature stage company, right? Because management style, uh, susceptibility to innovate, tolerance of failure, how you market, how you sell, how you engage employees, budgets, marketing spend, brand spend, PR spend, personnel, boards, layers of management, it's all different, how you raise money, how you deal with it, it's completely, di like there are no similarities, it's not like, you know, one's clay court, one's grass court and both are tennis, no, one's fucking baseball, the other's is synchronised swimming, like that's how different they are, and so, <laughs> and so, and what happened, so we, we went to the States for a week, and we, we were in an entrepreneurial finance, so typically what traditional business education institutions have done, is they've gone, let's take what we deliver in our business programs, call it entrepreneurship, and that will be our entrepreneurship degree, right? But it's just the same stuff, and it doesn't actually apply. And so we're in the entrepreneurial finance, entrepreneurial, so how to manage and drive the financials of an early stage business. We're looking at a case study from corporate America. So the whole unit is premised on a case study from corporate America from the 1980s, and you're looking at a balance sheet with $30 billion on it. And from that case study, all the questions and exercises and discussions form of, and so, you know, like you guys know this better than anybody. You guys watching this know that you sit down to start a business and you go, I've got $4. 
or I've, I'm in $20,000 debt, or if you're lucky, you might sit there and you go, I've got 50 grand to play with, right? Even as your organization grows, you might go, I'm now managing a business doing $10 million a year, right? Sounds like a lot, it's not. Uh, I'm doing $10 million a year. And it's still so substantially different. Like if you take the principles that corporate America would have applied to $30 billion balance sheet from 36 years ago and try to apply it to any business sub $50 million, it will not just be useless, it will kill you, right? And so I don't, I don't have a huge amount of respect for, for traditional education, particularly when it comes to educating entrepreneurs. There's a second part to Elaine's question around, should we just learn the, the basics or something? What was that? The second part was, should we be leveraging the basics and eventually employ others with yeah. those talents? Well, no, you shouldn't employ others with those talents because, because until you become a corporate, why employ someone who's trained to run a corporate, right? Now, when you get to a million dollars revenue, should you be employing people who have experience in a five or $10 million company? Yes. Absolutely, because they'll be able to help you navigate the next phase of your business, right? You'll always direct it, you'll always lead it, but it'll be informed a lot by their experience, right? Um, however, do they need to have an MBA? No, right? What, so I'm just thinking as I'm talking, what would be the point where I would actually start looking for MBAs? Maybe 100 million revenue plus, right? If you've done an MBA at Harvard, that piece of paper will hold weight for me uh, in a business doing $100 million plus. But pre that, you need people who, um, you know, and even in Australia, right, like our COO is a, a guy called Florian Stark. He is an absolute gentleman. He is an amazing human being. He's far too honest. Uh, like, he's just super high integrity, high, high degree of honesty. Um, and... You know, he, he's, he's built, he's built and, and played a significant part in the build of several education institutions that have reached several hundred million dollars and some over, over billions of dollars, right? Um, and so does he have an MBA? I don't even know, but no, he doesn't. In fact, he's, he's, he's qualified as a sound engineer. He qualified as a sound engineer, started running a sound engineer college, did that, built it, you know, sold that with another company for 300 million to another company. I won't go into the details. Um, and then moved on to another large education institution. And so, and so that's somebody who's this, my COO, so number two in my company, uh, and provides so much grounding and so much substance and so much, uh, um, what would I say, sort of clarity around my foresight. And so there's this co-creation thing that goes on between the founder and the entrepreneur CEO going, this is where I want to go. And then you bring someone like Florian in and he goes, this is how we can reach it and this is how it might look and this is how we should strategize it and we debate it and we discuss it and it's this beautiful synergy. He's qualified as a sound engineer and I dropped out of university after three months. 